Hello everyone! Again, this is Megafil X, and uh, this is gonna be a short video to uh, just share with you guys how how basically I draw hair. Uh, <laughs> first, uh, of course you can draw hair just like this, you know? You can just like have a second highlight color and just do that. And, but that's obviously not I'm gonna uh, what I'm gonna show here. I'm gonna show here how, how I do it when I go for a style that is more um, you could say realistic. It's uh, probably not the best looking one, of course. But uh, I, let me just show how I do it. So of course, I already assumed that you know you have to draw the overall shape of the hair. Which is uh, here we're using shampoo as an example, but yeah. So you draw the overall shape of your of the hair, and you have the the, the outline, and you will have uh, basically a base color uh, for the background of the hair. <laughs> so like the 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 darker color, and you have the uh, the highlight color. So in shampoo's case. It's the, 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 the blue, the dark blue. And you have the, the light blue, which is more like purple or whatever. So, as you can see here, I already, uh, I already drew the, the, the dark color. First, I'm going to take the light color and start, you know, applying it wherever I want highlights so uh, we're gonna do this part of her hair for just just the example of this video so first you go to your layer where the color is and you select pixel so you have a nice uh, selection of the whole thing so this is just so that you don't you know go outside the the zone with your color so you will draw very basic you know highlight color you can just go nuts it doesn't really matter oh thanks I like when you do that the shortcut you know I'll not only deselects the, the 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 layer but also starts playing the animation which is uh, everything opposite of what I wanted to do. <laughs> so now that we have this, we go nuts with the smudge tool. The smudge tool is this little finger here, and we give it a strength of a uh, pretty strong, pretty high strength. And we take a brush that's, you know, like, you will understand what, what, what what's happening so let's let's try with this one so it has a strength of 88 and uh, this size which is 40 it depends on the size of your, of your pictures basically so you go like you go back and forth with the smudge tool and there you go now with this um, it, it, it's time consuming, uh, at least for shampoo, because she has lots of hair, long hair, you need to do like, the, the, the problem with this is that you need to make a pretty smooth motion with your pencil or pen or whatever to do so that it looks uh, smooth because if you don't if you don't do it smooth enough it's gonna look like you know it's gonna look weird like see here I'm intentionally like it looks weird it looks painted it looks it doesn't look good so you have to go back in and do like long sweeping motions like this to to do something that looks nice 
you have to go with the shape of the hair. Like, you know, you have to follow the lines and try to imagine, like, uh, how every strand of hair is, is placed, basically. Now, I, we're, we're, we're pretty much done. It's a pretty simple uh, technique. Another thing you can do is you can uh, have some white in front of it, like this. It's a separate layer on top of it, and you can do the same thing again. I'm doing it pretty quickly here just to, uh, just to explain how that works. So now you have a uh, a nice little highlight and it looks cool another thing you can do uh, once you're done with the highlights is, is you can have shadows as well so you take your your um, darker color and you make it even darker maybe even black if you want you select the the entire thing again and you paint some shadows. Well, that's not a place where there would be shadows, but let's say uh, behind her ear and neck, for example. You do something like this. Because, you know, the hair goes behind her, so it's, it makes sense. And you do the same thing with, again, the same smudge tool. And you follow basically where you think. So now you need to be careful. It's always a good idea if you have a layer that goes behind something to draw color even if you don't see it. Because when you smudge it, I'm just gonna show you here. Let's see, for example, I need to, I would need to add something to the selection like this so that the selection goes behind these layers or at no at, uh, for now they're on top of it so but you'll understand even better if I feel like this so you put some more color under like not under but in this case I will I will put it under later but you're so you put more color like this so that when you smudge there is something to there's some color to pick from, basically. Because you see, when you go outside the selection with the smudge tool and you go back, it's like taking color, it's like taking nothingness from outside of it, and it breaks your whole thing. So you, you it's always a good idea to have some color that is outside the zone where you'll see it. So that way, when you smudge, you won't drag uh, n nothingness back into the picture. Just to give you an idea, when it's finished, it would look like this. See? So, of course, this is done pretty fast, only as an example, but you know, you get the idea. You can have, uh, like, for example, here you would have. Um, shadows here because you know the sun the color uh, the light comes from above and uh, basically what I'm gonna do with this whole thing is I'm gonna have like highlight here highlight here I'm gonna do the whole thing like this like I'm gonna draw this like the top of her hair like this and yeah so now you have to do the same thing all over the place. <laughs> the more you do it, the like the more work you put in, you put into it, the better it's gonna look, of course, because it's gonna look like hair. Like you will be able to see everything, but you can also make it like only certain parts are highlighted like this, and it will still look good. Um, so see, there's an example of a finished thing that I did. 
I really went in this picture I really went ahead and like try to draw everything try to like account for every single part of her hair to make sure that it was the, uh, drawn and we like it looks it's probably the one I put the most effort into her hair of course there are lines in there there are lines that are just drawn and uh, there's this part here that is uh, a basic shape essentially oh another thing I did here is I added lines uh, with the path tool I can show you that I took the path tool this thing and I drew curves let's say we have a uh, I don't like working with this tool on the tablet, but basically you draw a curve like that. This is basically one strand of hair. And you use a brush that is very small. Let's say, I don't know, 7 pixels. You go in the path tab, you right click and select stroke path and you select the brush that you just used and you can simulate pressure and and let's say that we remove the path like this is what it looks like see it um it did basically a line on the path and it's a pretty smooth curve that you didn't have to draw perfectly with uh, by like manually so let's Let's show you what it looks like if you don't simulate pressure. It will do a simple line that is always the same uh, width. So it looks, uh, it looks, it doesn't look as good. So I, that's why I like to select simulate pressure. Otherwise, you have to go back with the the eraser and do something like this. So that it looks, you know, more like here and that's a pain in the ass to do so it's a good idea to simulate pressure and um, and uh, do something like that so I do this with you know for the extra hair that is you know all over the place like these you can also draw them like by hand like this you know it's nice because it kind of looks like uh, her hair is a mess. But it gives a nice feel, you know, it's... Uh, of course now that's too much, but it's because I just want to show you. <laughs> so uh, that's the very, very basic stuff, but um, you can do a lot of things with this technique. I also do. I also use the smudge tool to draw like uh, fabric and like when you have to draw sheets or you know co covers or uh, like even her clothes, which are I'm probably gonna use the same technique. You can do the same thing. Or uh, you know, giving it a, a, a feel. <laughs> a nice realistic feel but in this case you will probably use a brush that has a bit of a, a smoother thing like instead of having a of being a you know having hard edges you will take one that is smooth so you have a more like a feel like a, you know it's hard to explain <laughs> It'll look more like fabric. So that's it. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this uh, this uh, little video will be helpful to you. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter or on Facebook. I have a Mega Man Unlimited page and a Shampoo page. And uh, on Twitter I post drawings all the time. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time.